Thank you for joining me as I sit down with Pastor David and Marie Rosales from Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley, as we discuss marriage, raising children, and managing difficulties that arise in the family. We're ready to begin, so let's talk marriage. Well, you know, as being a, uh, a pastor's wife, mm -hmm. there's a lot of assumed roles that people may think that you have mm -hmm. because you're the wife of a senior pastor. What would you say, are there any roles that stick out to you that people assume that you are because you're Pastor David's wife? I think that sometimes people think that if they can get to, to his wife, they can get to, <laughs> to the pastor, and sometimes they want to be friends with you. <laughs> I mean, and, and um, because you're the pastor's wife. But, but I think just coming alongside my husband has been very fruitful, mm -hmm. and I, I love the women that we have here in our, our women's ministry, and I have wonderful women who, who are our servants serving as uh, uh, other women in our church um, with a lot of Bible studies going on. And, and uh, we've been, I've been blessed beyond measure. And uh, yes. it's been, um, like I said, it's been a very sweet time for us um, to see what the Lord has done. And, and who would ever have thought, I would have never thought, John, to come to this building um, I'm very grateful to the Lord and how he's used my husband um, because I know my husband is a man of God and he loves the Lord with all his heart and he wants his church to be taught well, mm -hmm. to know the word of God. And um, Is that amazing? Oh, it's... it's it, 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 it really is, and it's gone by very quickly, too, John. <laughs> and Marie, you know, you think about our women's ministry. It's a strong ministry. Mm -hmm. It's very fruitful. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of women that have, uh, that have lives have been transformed in our women's ministry. Yes. And that's a testament to your leadership, you know, and the women love you. They, and, they're uh, very precious and sweet, and I love them. And um, our women are very... Very sweet, John. Very, very sweet. And uh, um, they are, they love the Lord. They really do. And and they've sat under this pastor. <laughs> and, um, and, and, um, that's amazing. You know, I could be replaced quicker than Marie. Mm -mm. And that's a fact, you know, because uh, I, 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 it's not that hard to teach a Bible study, it really isn't. You know, prepare, and hopefully you're anointed. You know, and and people will put up with people like me, um, who, like my wife just said, I'm direct sometimes, and and all they'll put up with with me for the word. But and Marie Marie doesn't like to receive this because she's a humble woman. But I've told her I'm easier to replace than she is. She has she has a tremendous. Uh, spirit of a loving spirit uh, i i think in all the years that i've known her and and i say this to her personally so this isn't hard to say now um uh, she's unique i was just telling my sisters uh madeline and rebecca just last week i said to to them there's nobody like her you know i i married for me the perfect person the perfect person I really did. I mean, that's not that she's perfect. She knows she's not. I'm <laughs> close, right, Marie? <laughs> well, no, not even that. I am the perfect person, and she knows that. <laughs> no, she, she, you know, I, I, I don't want to give the impression that I've got some, some, my head in the clouds, and I don't know what reality is. Of course I know what it is. We've been together for enough years to know that neither one of us is perfect in that sense. But for me, as a man, there's no other person that I would, well, I, I, I would want nobody. She is the perfect. She fit in, you know, she fit into my life as I fit into hers. She needed me, and I needed her, and that made us. And so this church, you know, you get a good teacher in here, and the church will continue. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a good woman's minister to love and care for and minister to those women, um... Women will make a choice. I'm not going to be in that church. And the husbands, because husbands uh, often just follow mom because 
mama matters and I don't need, I don't need to, you know, be there. I'll go wherever she goes. A lot of men are that way. A lot of men have left our church, not to be negative because it sounds negative as I'm saying it, but it's true. A lot of men have left our church, not because they wanted to, but because their wife decided they wanted to be somewhere else. You know, and I'm aware of that. I mean, a lot of men come to church the wife wants to go to. In our fellowship, um, I have a very unique woman who never has felt, and she'd say this for herself, but I'll say it right now. Um, Marie doesn't have the call to be up there teaching verse by verse. That's not her call. Her calling is hospitality. Her calling is uh, she she ministers to the gifts of the needs that people have. She has a gift that 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 a uh, gift of helps and 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 this the loving spirit that she has, John. Uh, after all of these years that I've been around her, and my brother told me, if you're jealous, don't be around Marie because she's a very <laughs> loving person. Um, it was true, and thank God I I wasn't possessive, and I'm not like that, but. She is, and she has taken the rough edges from me, and she smoothed them with her kindness. And so what I am now isn't her work, because my mom told her when we got together, my mom told Marie, <laughs> your job is to make him into a good man. <laughs> That's what my mom and Marie told me that. <laughs> and I said, that in your job, and don't try it, because it ain't going to work. You know, and she knew better from yes. the beginning. It's not her job to make me into anything. But in terms of our relationship, mm -hmm. her influence has been of such nature that she has helped me to become mm -hmm. the man I am. And that's what I think a good marriage does. It helps you to be the best that God intended you to be. Mm -hmm. So in my case with Marie, as her husband, um, I'm her pastor, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm her pastor. Yes. I've been her Bible teacher long before I was her boyfriend and pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was her Bible study teacher first. I became her boyfriend, became her fiance, became her husband, became the father of our children, the grandfather of our grandchildren. All those are stages. But we've been the word-centered. Not that we've been perfect in it. God knows mm -hmm. I've made my share of sinful errors. God knows that. Marie knows them all. But the bottom line is, is she has seen a consistency in me, and I have seen a goodness in her that has made us who we are. And so if there's anything I think we together add to this church is stability, because people can leave and go where they have to go. Maybe they move to another state and they come back, and they tell me on occasion when they do that, you haven't changed a lot. I came home and and uh, came back to our church, and you're still up there doing what you've done in the past, and and uh, this that gives me a sense of stability. And um, if there's anything we can add, and Marie adds that to this church, is it's that whenever this girl gets up there to share, and and she does, uh, she doesn't need the limelight. She doesn't need to be the center of attention. She doesn't have that craving. She just wants the Lord to be glorified and the people to be loved. Mm. That's a fact, and that's what the women find here. She doesn't have to stand up there. She hands a lot of, of, uh, of mic time to other people. You know that. She hands it to, here, give a book report here, or, or introduce our guests there. She hands her authority to others. She's not the kind of person who's got to be the center. Everybody, all you chicks follow this lead right, chick. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not that woman. Now, we've known women like that. We, we were t talking yesterday without using names. It would be unfair to. But I, I, we were just talking about a very dear friend of ours who the way we, Marie met her was she was carrying in the pulpit that the guest speaker, a woman, the guest speaker, had to speak from her own pulpit. And she brought her own pulpit to one of our women's things many years ago, and her assistant was carrying in her pulpit. Picture, and this girl was 5'2". Picture her carrying a pulpit in and putting it down. That's how we met this girl, you know, who became one of our dear friends for a long time. Um, 
And and Marie came home and said, you know, it was odd today what happened. And she shares that with me, how that this woman had to have not only her own pulpit, but she had to have someone carrying it in for her. And she hurt herself when she was carrying it, as I recall. And Marie told me, you know, she 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 hurt herself. And see, I, why am I telling you? I'm telling you that because that's Marie's, Marie's style of leadership, John, is making you build up, not making you feel like she's special. You know, and do you know there was a time, John, um, years ago now, things have changed over the years, but we had over 700 women, over 700 going to women's retreats, mm -hmm. women's retreats. Mm -hmm. We had to restrict the amount of women, over 700, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, for a church of our size at that time, it was almost a third of the church was out at a retreat. Because of what God was doing through my wife, because they knew that they would get great teaching, great fellowship, great worship. And so, no, God, God gave to, to this church a special gift when they gave this church my wife. Because they know that they're going to feel loved. They are loved. They're loved. You know, Marie, uh, I, can, I can say this for my wife. You have, and I can, and you've, and, and for pastor's sake, pastor's made me a better man. You have made my wife a better woman. And she tells me that. And, and that's just a small sample size of the many women here. And so, uh, I mean, you're, I'm blessed to, to know you in a way that, uh, you know, I know you in a certain way and it's, yes. I'm blessed. And you have, both of you guys have made our, our marriage better. And, you know, when you think of Pastor David and Marie, you always think that Pastor David wouldn't be Pastor David without Marie. Mm -hmm. And Marie wouldn't be Marie without Pastor That's David. True. You know, we we're talking about this yesterday, the matter of seconds, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just amazed how God has made you both complement to this ministry here. And that's amazing. That's uh, One of the women asked Marie is, how can the other women of our church best support you in prayer? What were some of the things that, or they can support you practically or and or support you in prayer? Oh, how the how can they support? Just continue to pray for us. Keep lift, keep lifting up our, our minute the ministry, and continue to pray for the ministry, and and continue to that. Also, that our our fellowship will continue to love and pour out on other people. Um, you know, I, I I do feel like we're in the last days, mm -hmm. John, and um, and we and and there are a lot of people that don't know the Lord, and we have wonderful wonderful. Um, servants that um, are here, and we need to go out. And we need to be able to to share with people, to bring them to the Lord, um, because I, I I just really see that that's so important, and um, so that would be one thing I would think that's very 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 important, as um, sharing God's word and and um, with with people that we see just on the street. Right. <laughs> yeah, and um, being, allowing God just to use you. And, um, and I, the result of, the, of my husband's ministry is, is definitely that many, many people do that here. <laughs> many of them are, love the Lord and do share their ministry. But we, we just, I think it's time's running short. Yes. Yeah. Time's running short, and sometimes we get um, um, involved with our own lives, and uh, we need to look to the to what's outside. Yes, and, you know. And, and when I think of you guys, of both you guys, your ministries that you guys are the, the women's ministry, you leading our church pastor. You know, right now, currently, and this is a plug-in for our our uh, Sunday morning teachings. Come join us for the Book of Revelation, uh, and. Uh, but as you're going through, as you're gone through Ephesus and you've gone through um, Smyrna and uh, Pergamos, is, Pergamos is coming up, I th each of those churches represent a period. I think of our church. Mm -hmm. I think we would be considered the loving church mm -hmm. because of the people who are watching are loving. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a reflection of both of your ministries and how you've loved the Lord first, loved one another, and have loved our church. So by default, we're going to love. But Marie, it's important, as you're mentioning, that we do. The people are going to pray for mm -hmm. uh, Pastor David and Marie. Pray that our eyes are open, that we may continue to love. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I've, that is, uh, 
There's a lot of hurting people. Oh, mm -hmm. so many. Need the Lord. Mm -hmm. So many. E even who are watching. So many in our congregation. So many people that are hurting. And uh, But, you know, another thing is that in... And you guys may not recognize this. You may. There's a lot of love that pours out, even when you're teaching, Pastor. Mm -hmm. The conviction, yes. Mm -hmm. But the love, uh, and Marie, the love that you give the women, again, it's we're considered a loving church. Brother Perkins was just here, and he was telling Dave and I, your church is a loving church. Uh, again, a testament to our leadership. and who You know, we're Jesus doing. said, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, right. if you have love for one another. And um, for, for both Marie and for me, mm -hmm. um, the idea of uh, a church that's cold, mm -hmm. uh, that's not a church. You know, I, 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 Francis Schaeffer once made it clear. He said that if there was such a thing as a birthmark mm -hmm. for, a, for a church or for a believer, that birthmark would be love. Mm. And um, in, in the early history of the church, one of the things that was said by pagans concerning Christians was, behold how they love one another. And so that to us is the most important thing. I think that part of, part of when Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, um, the, Lord, the Lord put that on my heart uh, because I, I'm a person who seeks peace mm -hmm. and unity. I, mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. I, I think that truth needs to be spoken, and truth is what unites. You know, errors are the things that really mm -hmm. divide. Truth unites when it's embraced, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I preach the way I do, because I don't want, I don't want to stand before the Lord and, and have the, the, com the condemnation, if you will, using that word in, in this context, that, uh, you didn't tell him the truth. You didn't tell him the whole truth. Because in 1 Corinthians 3, when Paul is speaking concerning wood, hay, and stubble and precious stones, that's really the teacher's reward he's speaking about. And, and James told us that there are teachers that, um, he said, they, that, that they teach with a, with a wisdom that isn't really from above. And he said, therefore, he said, do not desire to be teachers. You'll receive stricter judgment. So for me, it's it's been an important a very important uh, element of of uh, standing behind a pulpit it's, is to to do my best to divide the word, and do my best to present it properly. And and yeah, I'm I, I you know I, there are some fantastic teachers, and I'm not one of them, John. But I I do want I do want people to know that there's a pastor up here who tries, who wants to. I do the best I can with the 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 gifting and, and, and all that I have and, and all. Um, but when they walk out, uh, I want them to be able to say, you know, if there's one thing we get at that church, it's a Bible study. Uh, that's what I want, you know. And, and if, you, if you love the Lord, mm -hmm. God set us free. Mm -hmm. If you love the one who set you free, and then he's given me so much, like you see me on occasion, you know, people, I think sometimes, and I don't say this with weirdness, I hope it doesn't come out that way, but I really am a thankful man for what God gave me. I really am. Uh, and, and was I originally? No, I had to grow into this. You know, when Marie met me, I was a confident, arrogant young man. You know, I was, you know, very, but I think she was attracted to that strong young man who said, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to do it. And I know she was, you know, <laughs> that, that she said, finally, a man who's willing to be a man, who's, who's saying what he thinks and, and, and what we together should do. I know she's always admired that about me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, her gentleness and her gentle spirit and her tenderness of heart has, has taught me to be kind, to be kind when I speak the truth, to speak the truth with love, and because that's important, that's what you see after 47 mm -hmm. years of teaching, is, is, is that, that when I speak to this church, it's because I love them, and I know that that may be the only time I am able to, to share you know, with these people. They may not come back, they may die during the week, they may find another church to go to, you know, a story of D.L. Moody that has really directed me. 
was the night that he gave a a message with an intent to bring people to faith in Christ, but instead of closing with an invitation, D.L. Moody closed by simply saying, I want you to consider the things I shared, and next week come back, ready to make your decision for Christ. That's basically how he closed his message, but that was the night of the great Chicago fire, wow. and he never saw those people again. And D.L. Moody said, I, I determined at that time to never close a message without giving an opportunity. Well, for me, I have the same spirit where I want people to know what is true. I used to say, if you don't like me, let me give you reasons why. I don't want you to be a person who say, I don't like that Rosales guy, but I'm not sure why. No, let me make it clear <laughs> why you don't like me. And um, because, you know, uh, Jesus said, you know, beware of the ones who always speak well of you. He said, they're the ones to be aware of. Um, because, you know, a man who wants to have other people like him is going to be willing to do anything to make them like him. For me as a teacher, my responsibility is to speak the truth, but to do it with love, you know. And so I, I do love, I do love my people. Now, like I tell them, John, you know this, you've heard me say this, I, I can't know every single person here. I, I, it's, it's just not possible that I could. I, I won't know everybody's name. I won't know their occupation. I don't always remember their name once they give it to me. It's, I, I'm unable to do that. But that doesn't mean that I can't make the best effort and my wife doesn't make the best effort to, to, to really care or to train people who can help them in their time of need. I can't do all the counseling in this ministry. I can't do everything. Right. We have to work together to do it. And th that's why I think the woman's ministry is a backbone ministry in this church. It really is. And that's why the pulpit ministry is, to me, a very, the most important ministry is the teaching of the Word of God. Uh, but how you teach it and how you how you approach the people. And I would never want someone to walk out saying he doesn't love me because mm -hmm. I don't think they could really say that. I may not do what they want me to do, which makes them say, oh, he doesn't love me. Well, that's just, that's just narcissism on their part, to be honest with you. Um, or maybe ignorance on mine. But nobody can really leave our church, John, and say that that man didn't teach the word. They can't. They can't walk out saying, well, that wasn't true worship. They can't say that. Our worship team is anointed. God has anointed our worship team. And as we sing to Jesus, he senses his presence. You know, they can't say the woman's ministry is a clique filled with women who, that's just not true. Mm -mm. I, I really believe that God has blessed this church. And, and, um, and uh, one of these days when I say bye, which I will do, every pastor does, um, I will leave this church in good hands knowing I did our best. And that's all you really need to know at the end of the day is I pour it out. I, I, you know, like Paul said when he closed Second Timothy in chapter 4, I ran, you know, I fought, and, and henceforth has laid up for me a crown. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. And that's how I work. None of these days. One of these days. Uh, how do I even respond to that? <laughs> With an offering. <laughs> Laid at your feet, oh right? <laughs> Give me a bucket, he's ready. <laughs> Now's the time finally, to give, right? <laughs> finally, after all these years. <laughs> uh, you know, these are uh, both what you guys can both answer. What piece of advice would you pass on? And Marie, this could be geared towards you, what piece of advice would you give uh, to a new pastor's wife? Oh, I, well, I would say um, you need to have thick skin. <laughs> As a, um, you need to have thick skin because people will come up and say some things, and sometimes there's stupid little things, and, and um, but at the same time, you need graciousness. You need to be gracious, and um, don't 
um, don't let that bother you. Just continue to, to, to be gracious. And I think that's really important for a pastor's wife is to be, to be gracious to, to the individuals um, um, and um, to love the pe- women that you, that you minister to, to be loving, to encourage, to um, seek those that are uh, new in the, in the fellowship or uh, just to be friendly. That's like something that I think that we all need to be is to be friendly. But as pastor's wife, you need to be friendly and and encourage the women and uh, uh, be among them. And would you ever imagine, Marie, that you would be a senior pastor's wife? No, no. I, that was probably the furthest from my <laughs> mind, John. I, I know, and I just knew that. Um, when we married, I, I, I knew that where he went, I would go, and that I would never leave his side. And so um, it, it's been wonderful. I've met wonderful people. Um, I can't say enough, John. It's been, a, it's, it's, it's been a gift from God because I wasn't headed in that direction, John, when I went to that Bible study, I just, I just went because I was invited. And and so I wasn't headed in that direction (laughs) toward the Lord at all. And yet he met me there. You know, it was like I sat down and I, for the first time in my life, heard a message, a gospel message. Because in the church that I was attending, it wasn't. I just sat and looked around at all the beautiful icons. <laughs> and and um, so. Marie, if, if Pastor were to be a truck driver or an athletic coach, what career would you would say if you wouldn't have, if you weren't into what you're, the ministry you're in now? Oh, I can tell you. A nurse. You, a nurse? Mm-hmm. A nurse. For babies or? Well, you know what, John? Um, I think it would have been for the for babies or adults. I did candy striping when I was younger, oh. when I was in college, um, and um, and yeah, and I was headed. I would have been headed in that direction. I would I would have been a nurse. And the trajectory for both your lives changed so drastically, <laughs> right? Yes. I mean, Pastor, you're already down that road going already, but Marie coming in and hearing the gospel isn't it amazing. That gospel that transformed your life in '74. Is the same gospel that transforms lives today, huh? Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. lives. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys, thank you so much for uh, answering these practical questions. I mean, again, these are questions that people had answered a little different from what we're typical mm-hmm. what we typically talk about. But I thought it was fruitful mm-hmm. to hear both your hearts and to hear uh, what the Lord has done in your lives. And you know, the the earmark. And you guys will know this song better than I do. They will know that we are Christians. The old song. Yes, by our love. Perfect. And Amen. you guys have both demonstrated Christ's love to our church, to my wife, and to me. So I want to thank you guys for where the Lord has brought you both. And thank you for spending the time today to answer some of these questions that people had asked there. We're so thankful, church, that we have an amazing pastor and an amazing Marie especially your enchiladas. They're the best. Oh, they really are. <laughs> but you haven't eaten her chili rey. I'm, I know, I'm waiting. And, you know, my yes. birthday's March 1st. <laughs> now, now, those uh, chili randos take a little bit longer well, to In other words, you're not uh, worried. I'm not going to get not qualified. I, I, I will come through but someday. But I will settle I will for your cookies. Through. Oh, those because cookies. Because those... Oh, okay. So, thank you. Thank you guys so much, and we love you. God bless you guys. God thank you. God bless you. Thanks again for tuning in. Let's Talk Marriage is a ministry of Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. If you've enjoyed this video, then please like and share it. We will see you again next week on another episode of Let's Talk Marriage.